Welcome back to another video. I'm Felix Rome and this one's going to be a little bit special. In this video I'm going to spend the morning with Plains Game. Things like Zebra, Topi, Thompson Gazelle and maybe the odd Eland. I'm also going to be explaining how using various focal lengths will really help improve the variation of your images for your portfolio. Ah, now what we need to do is find the animals. So we have found a nice herd of zebra and they're just on the top of this hill. The sun is about to rise so what I wanted to do is create a silhouette. I'm going to use my big lens, the 300, but we're going to sit further away from them to hopefully get some separation and they have to be on the top of the hill so then there's nothing behind them, only the sky and then their outline really stands out. So we've got this big line and they are moving, moving across. So let's see what what it looks like. Yeah, really cool. But now you've just got to wait for a really strong section of outline. So hopefully where the zebra are broken up, they're not right on top of each other, they're in a nice spaced out line. And then you can really see their outline. I'm really struggling to get a picture. All the zebra are really bunched together. So there's no separation between one another, so it all just looks like a dark blob along the horizon. What I'm hoping for is that they do split eventually, but the sun is almost risen. It's actually going to be blocked a little bit by the clouds, but it could still look quite fun. Well, we're going to wait here for a bit, keep trying this idea if it doesn't work, because really you've only got a short time when you can silhouette animals. You know, a few minutes or ten minutes after sunrise, the sun's just that bit too high, so it doesn't really work. And I'll try you know, a few other ideas, a few other focal lengths to see if I can get some good shots. But I'm really trying to make this one work. So we'll, we'll stick it out, we'll see. Sadly, we're not really going to have a sunrise today. The clouds are kind of blocking it, which it's not the end of the world. It does mean we get this quite nice soft light going on. But what I really wanted to do was a, a backlit image and try and explain how I would do that. But I might have to save that for the next video. They're very vocal, these zebra. Great. This lovely group over here and I like the way that you can kind of see the whole herd just go on forever. I've put on the 70 to 200 because I don't want to be too close to them to disturb them but I want to be able to capture a bit of kind of um, depth to the image so I'm going to use this instead of a super wide lens where they would look too small and they would be lost. So here I've got the flexibility to, to zoom in a bit. By the way, I never introduced, this is Mike. He's the expert guide that is helping me make this video this morning. How do you think it's going so far? Uh, we are keep trying. We'll keep trying. <laughs> we'll keep trying and see what we'll do because these zebra are keeping moving when they're watching us. They think we are a threat. Yes, they always But uh, we are not. No. We're just watching them and see what will happen. And every time we stop, they just keep moving further and further away. Well, maybe we'll keep moving forward yeah. and uh, see if we can 
see the topic mm -hmm. around because we have big group of topic behind up there on the hill mm -hmm. maybe they'll be coming down towards okay well that didn't quite work out i wanted to get a backlit shot of the zebra with the rising sun but there was no sunrise this morning and they were a lot shyer than I thought they were going to be. They're not too bad, like you can still be fairly close, but every time we moved and turned off the engine, they would run. And I can't really do these videos with the engine running because the camera's kind of shaking all the time and you can't hear anything I say. But I think I got one nice one with the 70 to 200. The silhouette shots, uh, I don't think so. I will put it on the screen and I'll explain why I just don't think it worked because it's there's only maybe two or three zebras where you can actually see their outline pretty well. The rest of the time they're just blocks of massive uh, of zebra and they're all stuck together and you just can't see any, any outline, any clarity of what they are. Um, but I'll try it again, I'll try it again. Anyway, I'm going to track down the topi now I think. Well, while we were looking for the topi, the sun came out mm. and we found some eland. I don't know if you can see, they're kind of over here. They're the largest antelope found in the Mara, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. But they're, they're quite shy, but there's some good numbers and it's quite pretty. And here's quite a good spot for me because I don't need to you know, open the door. We're lower down, so perfect eye level. So the grass just kind of blurs. And it looks lovely. That was a lot of fun with the eland. I've never really spent time with them before and often when I see them they're instantly running away from me but you know we had pretty nice light still early um, and there was quite a few of them, a youngster as well. I was trying to position them with a certain tree in the background and I think I got a nice shot. Um, nothing too special but you know with the 300mm lens nice close-up image. But Mike you said you had a really cool fact about the eland. Yeah. One of the facts for the eland is uh, the eland can jump up almost about two to three meters up. And uh, still the eland, the way they walk, there are some clicking. They click on the knees <laughs> for attraction for the females. Wherever they want to mate, they just go around clicking the knees and the female will say, wow, <laughs> something good. Yeah? That's really cool. So the knees click. Can't mind do that, but it seems to, well, it hasn't worked yet with the ladies, but... Yes. Unbelievable. And but only the males? Mostly the males, yeah. because they're the ones that making those sounds when they are hmm. moving. And how heavy is a male eland, like a the, fully grown one? The full grown up of the eland is about 900 kgs. That's a big, big That's animal. That's a big animal. And to jump two to three meters? Yes. God, I wouldn't want that land. And mostly we? they jump when they see the predator. Mostly we have this den for the hyena. And mostly when they approach the den, they think there's some dangerous thing about there and they can jump up to go away from the holes. Hmm. It's because hyena are too dangerous too. Yeah, God. 
Well, amazing. So yeah, I mean, that was a, a fun little sighting, slightly different. Yeah. We'll see, I might try my luck again with the zebra on our way back. I might try. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it again. Sweet, let's go. Cool. <laughs> That was awesome. As we were driving back, the herd of zebra were kind of moving back this way. They were almost leaving the park again. And there was one right beside the road and I was able to get low down and take a picture of him with the 70 to 200. I think it's pretty good. It looks good on the back of the camera, but ah, oh, awesome. So I did get one picture of a zebra at least. Yeah, that was a nice one. This morning was interesting. So it started out, I had this idea in my head. I knew that the zebra were gonna be there in big numbers. And I hoped to do certain pictures with sunrise and all of that, but you know, we just didn't didn't quite have a sunrise. You know, can't can't always predict if you're gonna get that or not, but we persevered. Um, I don't think I got any amazing shots first thing in the morning. But then the eland, that was great, and then you um, told us all those awesome facts about their clicking knees and yeah, everything. That was good. <laughs> uh, so that was good. that was nice to be able to get some shots of them. Uh, and then right at the end, as we we're coming here, we had that awesome zebra sighting. And I just looked on the back of the camera, and there's definitely a nice one there. I think it could look really good in black and white. So yeah, I thought we'd just come here and just just chill. I did take one picture of the buffalo, but the light's getting a little bit high now uh, for my liking. But still. It's lovely to enjoy it. Yeah. But Mike, you've been awesome, man. How's it been having, because this is the first video you've been in with me. Yes. How have you found it? Has it been? It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I'm not it's too annoying. Yeah, I'm not too annoyed. <laughs> I, I feel so good too, to yeah. be part of that video. Of course. Because I'm in the middle of this animal. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's always, always weird the first time I suddenly start talking to the camera. Most of the time, the guides stop and say, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, no, very fast. it's fine. <laughs> but no, you've been fantastic. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. Yeah. Um, it's been a little, little different, but next week I'll probably try and do maybe a top tips, three top tips or something like that. Shush, I'm stalking. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, we'll see what happens. But Mike, thank you so much, my friend. You're welcome. Really appreciate it. Thank and, you so uh, much too. Yeah, stay tuned and until then. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>